We can begin solving this question by writing down the known values. So let's write down the fact that the volume is 600. The pressure is also given as 150. And then finally, we have a rate of change. Now this rate of change is the rate associated with the pressure. So we're going to write that as dp dt. And because it's increasing, it's going to be positive, and the magnitude is 20 kilopascals per minute. So this is the known information. What is unknown is the rate at which the volume is decreasing. So symbolically, we're going to be looking for dv dt. And to find that, we have to turn over here to Boyle's Law. Let's rewrite that equation. It's the pressure multiplied by the volume equals a constant. Now, the pressure is variable, as is the volume. And you'll notice that they're being multiplied together. We have a product of two sort of variable functions of time. And because we have a product, we're going to have to use the product rule. So when I do my product rules, I like to use the following template. I let f equal my first function, so in this case p, and then I let g equal my second function, which is v. I then differentiate each of these equations. The f becomes f prime. Now on this side, we have 1p, and when you do the derivative of 1p with respect to time, you're going to have 1 multiplied by dp dt. Don't forget to multiply by that rate of change in pressure, the dp dt. Now because that's 1 multiplied by dp dt, it's just going to end up being dp dt. Similarly, over on this side, we have 1v, and so when we compute the derivative of 1v with respect to time, we're going to have 1 multiplied by the rate of change in the volume with respect to time, so dv dt. Again, because it's multiplied by 1, we don't need to write that 1. So these are the pieces of our template, and because we're doing the product rule, we can plug these pieces into what I like to call fig plus gif. This is a version of the product rule. It basically just tells us to take our f prime, which was dp dt, multiply that by g, which was the v, plus g prime, which is dv dt, multiplied by f, which was symbolized by p. Over on the other side, the question noted that C was a constant, and of course a constant isn't changing by definition, so its rate of change with respect to time is simply going to equal zero. Next, we want to solve this equation for what we're trying to compute, and that would be the dv dt. So a little bit of algebraic manipulation will follow here. We're going to subtract both sides of this equation by B, dp dt times v. It's a bit of a tongue twister. That way it will cancel out on the left-hand side. Notice on the right-hand side we're going to be subtracting from zero, so this becomes negative dp dt times v. And then finally we can divide both sides by the pressure p so that it cancels on the left-hand side. Now at this stage of the problem we're simply going to plug in the known values that we had listed earlier. So let's go ahead and do that. And dimensionally, when we divide this all out, the kilopascals in the numerator will cancel with the kilopascals in the denominator. This is going to leave us with centimeters cubed per minute. And when you compute this, you will find that the rate of change in the volume is equal to negative 80 centimeters cubed per minute. So we'll notice that indeed the rate of change in volume is negative, so that means the volume is decreasing. And in fact, we can rewrite our answer as follows. We have the volume is decreasing at a rate of 80 centimeters cubed per minute. Notice that because we are stating the rate is decreasing, or rather the volume is decreasing, that means we do not have to include the negative sign in this statement because the word decreasing implies a negative rate of change.